So we're going to now, on the same sample, look at the wood. One, one piece, let's just, uh, yeah, let's choose that piece. <clears throat> These are fra fragments of the uh, charcoal uh, that were influenced by the magnet and dragged off with those gloopy metallic particles. Yeah, I think I think it would be nice. Yeah, I can I can I can see here and grab this on the video. I think we can go in a bit closer. You can actually see in there that there's embedded all of these little spheres. Yeah, lots of them, lots of them, and that's what's pulling that piece of uh, wood around. It's going to find potassium, it's wood. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what, what is magnetic? Uh, iron? Iron. It's got to be the iron. Mm -hmm. Again, it's just It's George Oshawa products, look at that. With the addition of uh, sodium in here, uh, it's other than that, it's just George Oshawa products. Now, um, the interesting thing was that uh, Norris Peary said in his microwave uh, reactor, the overwhelming product that he got with uh, electrolytically deuterium loaded palladium, you know, the same 2.45 gigahertz microwave uh, frequency, the, the main product he got was sodium in abundance. So given that data point, the presence of sodium is not surprising. And this basically goes to show that if you have hydrogen and carbon and lightning, you can make pretty much everything you need to make life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> hydrogen, carbon and lightning. <laughs> oh dear.
Yeah, silicone balls. Yeah, Small. some spheres of uh, ferrosilicon, I guess. Yeah, and they're very, very well defined. Mm -hmm. Let's see if it's doing the sampling. Mm 